Job chapter 11. Then answer Zophar. Now the note about Zophar and Schofield is, Zophar is a religious dogmatist who is so to know all about God, what God will do in any given case, why he will do it, and all his thoughts about it, or all the forms of dogmatism, this is the most irrelevant and least open to reason. <laughs> You're the guy that knows it all, he doesn't know nothing. The name in the fight and said, uh, here he go. This is the third friend mentioned in Job chapter 2, but there is actually another one we'll learn later. Should not a multitude of words be answered? Well, that is only had to be from all the words that Job has spoken, and maybe all the words that everybody's spoken. Ten chapters worth. And should a man full of talk be justified? And the condemnation and the argument and the aim would probably be most likely Job, because who else would so far be addressing? You just full of words, Job, and looking for justification, you're not going to get it. He's only stated that you know with the troubles and problems he's had, he wish he would die. He wish he was never born. Then one friend stepped in, threw out accusations. He answered him. Then the second friend came in, threw out the accusation. Job answered him. Now the third guy comes in. Job's only answering the people that are talking to him. Should thy, Job's lies, make men hold their peace? Calling Job an outright liar. And when thou, Job, mockest, I don't know who Job has been mocking, should, shall no man make thee a chain? Job's been mocking the answers by his friends, and Job has been answering correctly. You're a liar, and you're a mocker. Mock is, that's the only time that word shows up. Shall not any man have about us three? Shall we not put you to shame? For thou, Job, has said, My, Job, doctrine is pure, and I am clean in thine eyes, God's eyes. But one place, let's go back to where Job has already spoken. Chapter 7, verse 20. Let's see if Job has said he's pure in his eyes of God. Let's see how pure Job says he is. Job 7.20, one place that we've already studied. I have sinned. Job has said in countless cases, we're not going to look at them all, but Job has countlessly said, hey, I'm guilty. I'm. And then in a couple places he said he's righteous. These are false accusations totally by so far. But all that God would speak, chapter 42, 7, 40, verse 1, he's going to, and open his lips against thee, Job. God's going to open up his lips, and he's going to charge Job correctly. Job has sinned. But he's also going to open up his lips and tell Job that your three buddies need to make a sacrifice. There he has sinned. Open his lips against thee. Not me. I'm good. You, Job, you're the liar. You're the scorner. You're the, you're the one that says you're okay. And that he would show thee, Job, the secrets of wisdom. Job is a pretty wise man. He's in the gate. He's a judge. We'll learn as we study on. Job is no dummy. He's got all this wealth. He didn't get it for, by being a fool. And that are and that they are double to that which is. Now he's mocking Job because all the wealth that Job has gotten has, has been diminished. It's been taken. It's been killed. It's been burned. It's dead. Job, you have no knowledge. You have no wisdom. Know therefore that God 
exactive, the only time that word shows up, of thee, Job. Less than I iniquity deserve it. Last time that word shows, only time that word shows up, deserve it. No, that is not the truth. Let me read the truth of this statement. God exacted of men less than men's iniquity deserve it. Not just Job. If God were to give every man what they deserve for their iniquity, we would all be burning in hell. We would have nothing. We would be cursed. Not just Job. So far, you're a sinner too. <coughs> Verse 7. Canst thou by searching find out God? Well, there's none that seeketh God, but you can search for God. Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? That's the first time that word shows up, perfection. And the answer is yes and no. Because the Holy Spirit is going to draw us. The Holy Spirit is going to lead us. The Holy Spirit is going to put into us that we are that sinner. There is none that seeketh after God, but you can seek after God. You just got to make sure you're seeking after the right God. And when God reveals himself, there are people out there bargain shopping for God. They want the God that will approve of their sin. That's not the God of the Bible. Now there may be a man going from church to religion to this to that and he's searching for God in all the wrong places but when the Holy Spirit reveals God to him and he receives God according to the Holy Spirit and what the Bible said then he's drawn to God. I'm not going to say that verse 7 is completely wrong and I'm not going to say it's completely right with scripture. Verse 8 it, I don't know if you start about the wisdom or searching, it is as high as heaven where God is. What canst thou do? Today, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Deeper than hell. Ooh. What canst thou know? Well, according to what we've learned so far for the book of Job, and we're going to learn from Job by Job himself and his word. Job knows pretty much. He knows that God's a creator. He knows that man was made from dust. How are you doing so far? What do you believe? You believe everybody's a liar, everybody's wrong, and you ought to condemn them. So far is not on good ground. Job is. Job, the Bible, not Job records, but the Holy Spirit records to us. Job offers sacrifices for his sons in case they sin. Job knew that all men were sinners and my sons need to be right with God, and I'm going to be that priestly office. When, Sa when Satan attacked Job the first time, took his possessions and, <coughs> and his children, he said, Hey, naked I came from the moon, naked I shall return. God giveth, God taketh away. Job sinned not with his word. Job's wife walks up to Job and says, Does I take thy integrity? Curse God and die. Thou speakest as a foolish woman to speak it. Shall we not receive good? And shall we not receive evil of the Lord? Job knows a lot of wisdom. It's these three friends of him that are in trouble. So they do know about hell. There it is, verse 8. And there is not a complete revelation until Jesus shows up about heaven and hell. Exactly what happened. You don't read about Abraham's bosom until Jesus said the rich man went into hell and Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. Now you're reading the Old Testament that says Abraham went unto his people. And there's a statement that says Ishmael went unto his people. I don't understand. Unless Ishmael was lost and he went. I don't understand. what. But it, the common thing is he went unto his people. When the kings died, they, they slept with their fathers. And this king was raised up, he was evil or, or, or good or bad. But they do know about hell. Seminaries of supposedly Bible colleges today don't even know about hell. I'll give one thing for Zophar. He believes in hell and 
many Christians do not. I had a Christian woman of a Baptist church come out to us with our street preaching, and she was all aggravated because I preached about hell and never came back. And they go about with evangelistic to children without hell. I don't want any part of that. You gotta preach hell. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Right there. H-E-L-L. Verse 9. The measure thereof is longer than the earth. And broader. Only time that word shows up than the sea. And I don't know if he's talking about the, the it and the measure. He's talking about searching. I don't know if he's talking about that wisdom. And you can know God. And you can know how to apply your knowledge for God. If he, God, cut off, God cuts you off. And shut up. That's a Bible word. That means he encloses you. He puts you up where you're like in a room and you can't come out. Or gather together. Then who can then who can hinder him, God? All right. So if God, whatever God does to you, who's going to stop God from doing that to you? Prayer. They were making prayer for Peter in jail, and the prayer was definitely answered. Kind of half-hearted because when Peter came knocking on the door, oh, God be his ghost. The disciples are in the boat. The boat's sinking. The storm is fierce and raging. Jesus answered their prayers, their requests. Lord God, help us. We're going to sink. We're going to die. That's a prayer. God answered many prayers in the Old Testament. Elijah's sitting there. Oh, if I be a man of God, let fire come down. That's kind of weird prayer, but he answered his prayer. Who's going to stop God? Well, absolutely nobody. But prayer can do wonders. For he, God, knoweth made man. That's true. Now, who is Zophar talking to? Job. So, who is Zophar calling vain? Job. Who's he calling a liar? Job. Who's he calling a mockus? Job. Who's he saying... You don't know God at all. You know, can you search out God? Can you stop God? Job. Job, you can't do nothing. And you're in no fellowship and no relationship with God. The only thing God knows you are, you're vain. You're empty. You're nothing. He, God, seeketh wickedness also. Of who? Everything that happened to you, Job, because you're wicked. Will he, God, not then consider it? All the things you've done wrong, Job. That's why what happened to you. Remember he said, remember what Scofield said, he knows it all and he knows why. Why did it happen to you, Job? Because you're wicked. And you mock and you're a liar. That's why everything happened. What did the Holy Spirit tell us? That's not the case. Satan wanted to get advantage of Job. Satan wanted to get rid of Job. Because Job was living, Job's influence was, was on others. The character of Job will inspire others to serve God, and Satan hated that. It had nothing to do about being him wicked. Go back in Job 1 and memorize Job 1 and 2. When God tells Satan, that man is true as evil, that man is perfect. According to the testimony of the Holy Spirit, chapter 1 and chapter 2, so far you're the liar. Verse 11, will he not then consider yet the wickedness? Yet he does. Not for Job. For vain men, okay, I'm going to explain what vain men are, Job. Would be wise, though man be born like a wild ass's colt. You don't know anything better than an ass. You see where that expression comes from the Bible when you call someone an ass? That's in the Bible. I know a preacher, he, he'd say ass and all that. Oh, how bad? That's the Bible. There it is. He just called Job an ass. You don't know any better than an ass. 
Job is stupid. You're a liar. You're a mocker. You don't know God. You're not searching God. And you're wicked. How about those words comforting you up? It ain't doing no comfort. By the way, Exodus 13, 13 says, with an ass, you're to redeem it with a lamb, or you break that neck, that the neck of that ass, which would bring death. And a man is considered an ass in the Bible, because if that if that man is not redeemed with a lamb, or God would take away the sins of the world, you break his neck, you cause him death. John says, He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. That condition is what we are in. We're asses walking around. And you better be a redeemed ass by the Lamb. You say, Style, you're taking this ass thing. No, I'm telling you what the Bible is. People don't want to believe the Bible. They say, Oh, you you know, you can't say the word piss in the, you know. Is it not in the Bible? Now, I can think of some other words that are not in the Bible we ought not to say, but you can't not say, oh, there are children present when we can't mention the word piss. Right, it's in the Bible. Are you saying the Bible is perverted? We ought not talk to, about this subject with little kids in the church. Why not? Don't they need to learn it's wrong? Is it our, not our job to teach the whole Bible, all the Bible, every word of, of God is truth? We are a bunch of asses. And Zophar calls Job an ass. Stupid. It's a lie. Verse 13. If thou, Job, prepare thy Job heart, and search out thy hands toward him, God. Job, you go looking for God. If iniquity be in thy hand, put it far away. At least he put F. I like that. And let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacle. Alright. If there be iniquity, put it away. There's no if or wickedness, is there? And he's already called Job wicked, verse 11. Job in your house, tabernacles. That's the definition of tabernacle that Moses built. The dwelling place, the dwelling place of God through the children of Israel. In your house, in your family, in everything you've got, there's wickedness. And if you commit a dick. Uh, iniquity, put that away. For then shalt thou, Job, lift up thy face without spot. That man, that righteous man, Jesus said, he wouldn't lift up his head, head to heaven, pounded his chest, said, Lord, be merciful to me for a sinner. If a man gets right with God, he's not going to look up in pride. He's going to look down to the ground and say, I am not even worthy. Mary was at the feet of Jesus, washing his feet with her hair. She wasn't looking up. And many times when it came to God, they fell down at the feet. Only a prideful man would, oh God, look at me, I deserve it. For then thou shalt lift up thy face without spot. Oh yeah, without spot, without sin. But, you know, there's a putting away of sin, but there's not the cleansing of... I mean, there's a cleansing of sin, but God doesn't put it away until the finished work of Jesus. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear. Now, there is his... Remember, Job said, this is what I've come upon me is what I fear... I fear this. I'm terrified. These are the words that Job has been speaking. Job, you put away your sin, and you know the terror will not be there no longer. So you're saying is, if Job got right with God right now, prosperity gospel would be all the money and everything comes back to Job. And he lives off hunky dorky, and they live happily ever after. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. The persecution Job's get not because of Jesus, but because he's doing right with God, has a good testimony with God, and the devil's attacking him. Do you think after Job 42, Job never had any more problems in his life? Absolutely not. There were more problems to come. 
Because, verse 16, Thou, Job, shall forget thy misery. You think this would be very hard just to forgive and forget what Job's going through. I will believe he's going to have scars. If And Job chapter 42 doesn't mention that the boil's going away. And if they do go away, there are scars. All right? There's no wife of Job in chapter 40. You think every time he's going to look for that, that wife's support, that spouse's support, if she's not there, I don't know. You think he's not going to remember to what curse God to die? You think he's not going to remember that? Are you think he's not going to look at his children at that time and say, oh, the time that I lost you guys. Oh, I thank God that you're back. You think he's not going to remember that? Those servants that survived, like I said, they could be the worst servants Job ever had, the ones that he hated, maybe. I don't know. When he looks at those guys, those five guys, I think four or five guys, is he not going to remember? What do you mean you're not going to remember? Because thou shalt forget thy misery. Look, the pain's still there. And remember, it is as waters that pass away. I don't know. I think what Job's going through right now will leave scars. I don't know if the boils go completely away. Remember Job said there are worms. Job said that there's pain. There, there's agony. Guys, give me a false hope. Verse 17, And thy age shall be clearer, that's the first, only time that word's up, than a noonday. You're going to know how old you are. Well, anybody knows how old they are. Thou shalt shine forth. Thou shalt be as the morning. So the older you get, the better you're going to get. No. The older you get, the more sound effects your body makes. Verse 18, thou shalt be secure. You couldn't sell that to David. You know, even Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh without sin, perfect. Do you know that Jesus had perfect relationship with God the Father, prayed to God the Father, fasted 40 days and 40 nights to the Father, did everything the Father told him to do, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus, all they that live godly to the Father shall suffer persecution. Do you realize what so far as promising Job never happened to Jesus on 33 and a half years on this earth? Tell me one moment that Jesus had when he talked to him. You should never remember your misery. All eternity he bears those scars. And remember it as waters passed away. Thy age shall be clearer than noonday. Jesus will be without the age. Thou shalt shine forth. Thou shalt be as the morning. Thou shalt be secure. Man, from the time that he angered the Pharisees, there was no security. From the time that he began to aggravate those Sadducees and those Pharisees, they were seeking out every time he did something wrong to, to destroy him. And John would profess to say, this, his hour was not yet. His hour is not yet. His time is not yet. So Job, I guess he can be better than Jesus. Thou shalt be secure, because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. After this, Job's going to have more problems. Maybe worse, maybe less. Thou shalt lie down. He's not lying down now comfortably. He lays down, he goes squish. He lies down, and those, those boils pop. They hurt, they're sore. And none shall make thee afraid. The fear of the Lord is beginning to wisdom. Fear will get you right with God. 
Zophar says, well, don't fear nothing. Zophar has the back of his camel, the, the bumper sticker that says, no fear. Foolish. I fear, and that keeps me out of trouble with God. So when I don't fear God, I get in trouble. Thou shalt take thy rest in safety. Thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid. Yea, many shall make suit unto thee. All right, that's bad now from Job chapter 2. All these people, all these enemies came against Job and killed and maimed and stole his possessions. This is what Job's afraid of. So far is attacking Job's fears. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail. True. They shall not escape. True. And their hope shall be as the giving of the ghost. Death. And that's not really hope. Because when a, when a wicked man dies, he falls off into hell. Definitely, even in the Old Testament. So Job, don't be that wicked man. There is 20. Job, if you're wicked, you have no hope. You need to get right. You need to get that hope. You need to search out God. And according to Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, Job's doing okay with the Lord. Job needs a little help. He's a sinner. We're all sinners. But he's not as bad as chapter 11. You know what's funny? You know what the bankrupt code is? Chapter 11 bankruptcy. It's all gone. It's all. If you've done better, I don't know. 